Good morning. This is a Saturday wrap for Saturday the 25th of January 2020. Nearly said 2019 there. Oh, never mind. And I can't believe it's been a month since Christmas. Uh, um, but it has. And it seems like a long time. And I'm a bit skint. Anyway, time 0851 Greenwich Mean Time. Live from the Malpum, Malpum? Malcolm Uphill in Caerphilly. So what are we going to talk about this week? Um, the weather and classic high pressure weather. Um, dealing with large organisations. Car insurance and a boiler install. Congestion charging. Uh, and new software. Anyway. Uh, the week started off frosty very frosty in fact um, classic high pressure weather winter style uh, sunny days cold clear frosty nights and i think that lasted until wednesday where we had the other type of high pressure weather uh, overcast a uh, little bit drizzly, a little bit of damp in the air, not quite as cold, not quite as frosty, but just hanging on. And looking out the window, it's still hanging on today. However, it doesn't matter. We're British. We don't do weather very well. Although, if there's any sort of weather we're used to, it's drizzle. Never mind. Anyway, so announced this week from Cardiff Council was congestion charging for getting into Cardiff. They suggested £2 a day. Now, the roads are already blocked. Uh, the buses, despite bus lanes being all over the place, are late and rather expensive. And don't really integrate with the trains and the trains well everything transport for wales rail said they would do they haven't uh even the stuff they have said they do like the new class 170 trains which are not new they're from uh, anglia railways and they run up to my steak they've been cancelling those willy-nilly and the wi-fi doesn't work although having said that just getting a train is the most important thing so since it would only be payable by valleys folk it's a tax on valleys folk for cardiff residents to get better roads hasn't gone down very well and if anything cart before the horse um, everything with transport in wales is jammed tomorrow and tomorrow is a long way off. Anyway, um, I had a new combi boiler installed this week. The old one was getting increasingly unreliable and my um, service contract with British Gas was going up every year. And I was told that because of its age, they would have difficulty in getting spare parts. The writing was on the wall. Anyway, um, so I got a quote and went ahead and I've got a new combi boiler. I was told it would take a day and a half to install it. In reality, the first day is the hardware install and the engineer, Gary the Gas, said he'd have it up and running but it would be five o'clock and he did so. He was really good. Um, the only thing was that uh, the thermostat, which was a hive, wouldn't be installed and the main method of turning it on and off was to knock it on and off at the mains. But since it was only one night, didn't really care. Day two was a completely different affair. Um, there was an electrician coming. Uh, first of all, didn't have a time of arrival. Did for Geraint, didn't for him. And the electrician, he was really good at the electrical bits. He was not as good as the organisational bits and the tech bits. Like he said, when's Garen coming back to install the Boiler IQ? Which is remote monitoring software. Turns out he wasn't coming back. He said, I'll ring him and find out. I asked him a number of times. In the end, he said I'd ring from the van parked outside. And he drove off. Yeah, um, didn't know the difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. 
Okay, so I've identified a training need there. Um, I later found out that I should have had an email from British Gas just after I have got the OK to go ahead to set up a Hive account. Didn't get it, wasn't in the spam filter and they didn't check up on that. Uh, I managed to set most of the stuff up myself because like it wasn't that difficult but they needed an Ethernet port on my router. All my Ethernet ports are being used. If I'd known that in advance, I could have got a switch instead of having to take something out to get it to work. Should have been on a tick list. And they, let's be honest, they did send me a big tick list, which I say thank you for, um, but it missed some things. Um, so, I got it working, um, but it came up saying your boiler's not being monitored. You click on there and it says, please renew a British gas. I had a number of phone calls back and forth to British Gas. Um, the second one, uh, I had a discussion with the gentleman about what is the single version of the truth. Why didn't he get Geraint the Gas and the electrician together? They could discuss it themselves and one of them could come back to me and tell me what was going on. He didn't record it, he didn't do it, he was a disgrace. However, the lady I spoke to an hour and a half later was better. Ended up speaking to Hive Support in India, which I didn't actually need, and then I got transferred to Boiler IQ Support in Scotland. And thank you, Scotland, you sorted it all out. However, the last thing was uh, the scaffolding. I had a phone call on the Tuesday afternoon, the install was on the Wednesday, saying, We're here to put your scaffolding up. Are you sure? Right, it wasn't in the list of things that I needed to be aware of. I was in work. Luckily, they could climb over the back gate. And I must say, they did a good job and they took it away. When they should have. Unlike the old boiler, which is still in the front garden and hasn't gone yet. I have a feeling that if it hasn't gone by Monday, I'll be back on the phone to my friends in British Gas. As regards the boiler and the software and all that sort of stuff, it's great. I love it. And it's more efficient than the old one. And my maintenance contract in the first year is down to zero, which is much better. But they need to work on their um, organization. And in other large organization relationships, car insurance. I'm with LV because um, I'm with the Civil Service Motoring Association, you get money off and when that guy went into the back of me they were really good and they sorted things out however the renewal quote was £30 more expensive than last year here's the trick ring them up say that you thought they were really good and you had really good service with them but you've only had 0.4% increase in your wages this year and say, uh, could you do something for me? They did. Uh, they knocked about £30 off. Actually, I just paid about 50p more than I paid last year. Uh, so, if you don't do anything, you pay full whack, you've got to haggle with them. Um, and there was no problems. They say, let's see what we can do, and they did it. So, thank you. Trick there. Anyway, software. Carbon Copy Cloner for the Mac. What an excellent piece of software that is. Um, used it for automatically backing up to a SSD. I got a little um, Samsung T5. Plug it in, kick off the software, off it goes. It also backs up to my uh, Synology NAS. It's just whoop, off it goes. Really, really good. And finally, does anyone remember Vine, the looping six seconds videos that Twitter bought and killed? It's back under the name of Byte. Looping six second videos. Unfortunately, I've had a bit of spam already from them. Follow me and I'll follow you back. Uh, I like Vine. If they sort this out, it'll be really good. Anyway, um, Byte app. Uh, or byteapp.co, I think it is. Anyway, look it up on the App Store uh, for Apple or iOS and Apple or iOS, Apple or Google, and it's there. So, um, I'm going to sneeze now, so I've got to go. Bye bye.